Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Time Machine. I am Harper, and I gotta tell you, I'm a little sad. This is the final video in a four-part series on how to draw better. <laughs> nope, that's a total lie. Making this series was a giant pain in the ass, and I just kept on trudging through, all because of you. I just wanted you to take the 30-day drawing challenge and perhaps improve your skills. Perhaps. Oh sure, you could watch these videos over and over and over and over and I suggest you do. But the rest of your art journey is up to you. Good luck out there. Now, what day was I on? Oh yeah, day 23. That's of course a number two pencil to get the party started. Followed up with my old nemesis, the Nasty Nib. One minute you're coasting along, going thick to thin with ease, and the next... The damn thing skips, clogs up, and shits the bed. But I pressed on, hoping that the nib would clear up and be my friend again. Nope, didn't happen. So I switched over to a fine liner to ink the love-struck salesman. He certainly wasn't expecting his three o'clock appointment with Miss Fullerton to be so jaw-droppingly memorable. I mean, who would have guessed a fiery red-headed vixen from Mars would open the door? One thing's for sure, the fellas back in the office will never believe Frank's wild story. After a few coats of watercolor, I tried to pretend that I could help the drawing a little bit with some colored pencils. But by then, I knew that I was just polishing a turd and it was time to move on. On day 24, I was feeling abstract. I remember floating above my body, my back against the ceiling, looking down at myself, staring at a blank page. The acrylics, palette knife, and roller called my name over and over. Okay, that part's total bullshit. I just wanted to try some layering techniques with paints. It was the second week of October, and I felt like making something kind of spooky, but not obviously spooky, not like a monster or a zombie or vampire, something more subtle. So I started with red, because what's more subtle spooky than the color of blood? On top of that, a layer of yellow ochre for some added mystery, it's a very mysterious color, and then Naples yellow rolled over that. Back to the palette knife for some gritty medium gray, and then an even bigger palette knife. Holy shit, man, look at that thing, it's majestic! To smear on a thick coat of white. And then things got crazy. I rolled on even more white. What? At this point, I still wasn't sure where this thing was going. So I started making lines with burnt umber and red. I did know that I wanted to roll on a layer of black at the bottom of the page to symbolize the ground, a separation of earth and sky. But in the end, it really wasn't screaming spooky, so I went ahead and spelled it out for you. Literally. Speaking of spooky, if you've ever been to hell, you've probably <laughs> woo, you've probably seen the evil creature I drew on day 25. I made quite a few drawings in this style for the series because it's an easy and fun way to practice your skills. Don't draw anything in pencil first. Just grab a brush, some cheap watercolor paints, and go to town. The only thing I had in mind when I started was a spooky demon dude. What does he look like? I don't know. Big teeth, little wings, spikes all over, no skin. I think I'm gonna be sick. Oh. I started by blocking in the main shapes with orange because that seems like a hellish color. You know, flames, hot lava. And then I just kept refining and refining as it started to take shape. 
I let the brush just find the shapes without trying too hard to overthink anything. And I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but that predator style mandible thing by his mouth was just a happy accident that organically grew out of the blobs of paint. Sometimes this style of automatic drawing turns into a sloppy turd bucket, and other times it gives you Bob Ross style happy accidents that you can use in future work. Again, just playing around in your sketchbook is one of the best ways to explore, experiment, and get better at drawing and art in general. After adding some purple shadows, I used a blue color pencil to make an open line drawing on top to flesh out the character. This dude ended up kind of looking like the Violator from the Spawn comic series, or maybe his cousin Fred or something, I don't know. Day 26 began well enough, but I should have inked this drawing before I painted it because the line work got lost in the end. I made a blue line drawing first and then cleaned it up with a number two pencil. The drawing is okay, but the van looks like it was squished in a giant vise. It's extra skinny. I added some flat watercolor to the image that turned out pretty boring and ho-hum. And at the end of this segment, I'll let you know what I really think about this drawing. Foreshadowing! I was trying to channel the work of cartoonist Dave Big Deal. I loved his drawings of cars and trucks when I was a kid, and I spent so many hours trying to copy them out of four-wheeler and off-road magazines. The guy is a master cartoonist. After a day at the beach of shredding tasty waves, this freaky freak is on his way over to Ronnie's house for a big party time Saturday night. He's down to boogie, and since the ladies get in free, <laughs> he still has no chance with any of them. And as promised, here's what I really think of this drawing. Could have been cool, but instead, it's a big stinky fart. Thank you. Day 27 is another, yes, another watercolor shape with a black pencil line drawing on top. But for this one, I knew what I was going to draw ahead of time. Frankenstein. Well, actually, it's Frankenstein's monster. But looking back now, I should have drawn Frankenfurter from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. But I can't do the time warp and go back and fix that now. So let's forge ahead. Let your brush find the shapes and lines that will best describe... Can I just tell you something? Drawing Frankenstein's monster is a lot harder than it looks, or at least harder than I thought it would be. I mean, I've seen the classic images like a million times, but I gotta admit, I had to make a quick thumbnail drawing just to understand how he's constructed. 
Anyway, I painted the silhouette with a light green, added some darker green, and then a little purple to help define the shadows a little more. I had to erase the left eye twice, but overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. The likeness is close enough, and come on, who else has bolts in his neck and that silly haircut? And of course, any Gen X cartoonist out there has to add the obligatory cheese ball word balloon, referencing Frankie Goes to Hollywood, circa 1984. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the fallback prices headline was torn from the same Walmart newspaper circular as in the last video. It doesn't make any sense, but I thought it looked cool. I think I was maybe running out of steam by day 28 because this is just a red pencil drawing of a crazy sidewalk surfer wearing a football helmet and short shorts. Clearly this dude is old school SoCal and has the t-shirt to prove it. Sure, his Budweiser regimen has shrunk the shirt in certain places, but man, the music will never die. Or some shit like that. I don't know. I got nothing for this one. I think it turned out pretty good, but the left arm is obviously too short and weird. I should have drawn the surfboard lower, and the drawing runs off the page at the bottom, but again, meh. It's just a sketchbook drawing. Here we are at day 29, the penultimate drawing of this series. I started with a rough pencil drawing, and in that drawing, I made the waist really low, which in turn makes his legs look really short, and his knees are even lower. Yep, you guessed it. Not happy with this drawing at all, but I only had 60 minutes, so let's just roll with it. His guitar looks like it was hit by a science fiction shrink ray, but I do commend myself on having the guts to ink it all black. I usually mess up stuff when I try to do that. The inks were done with a Windsor & Newton Series 7 Sable No. 3 in Speedball Ink. Of course. The way he's holding that guitar looks unnatural, and his supernatural, super large other hand is just a big whoops. Overall, the figure is very stiff and stale, and I know I could draw it way better if I tried again, but of course, I'm not going to do that. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of negativity flying out of my mouth right now, and I apologize for that. I'm going to see if I can turn it around. Hey, here's something positive. I do like the way the lettering turned out. I mean, it's not magical or anything, but it's pretty cool. Say, that reminds me, hand-drawn type can really add a lot to your drawings, and it's another great thing to practice in your sketchbook. And what's that I see on the horizon ahead? Is that? Yes, I think it is. I've finally made it to the end of the 30-day drawing challenge, because here comes drawing number 30. 
I began this one by making a rough layout of the entire page with a light blue pencil. And since there were so many word balloons, I did a quick thumbnail drawing of it first so I could have a general idea where everything was going to go before I started. I worked my way across the page and down, drawing the characters and balloons with a color pencil color called Copper Beach. Beach like a beach tree, not like sand and surf. I like how the word balloon for draw came out. The little hairy cyclops dude turned out cool, and the guy who's holding him is just the right mix of weird and creepy. Of course, the lady on the right looks lame. Her chin is Jay Leno big, her neck is in the wrong angle, and that hand holding the pencil is a stinky fart manifested as pencil on paper. But friends, let's remind ourselves that a sketchbook isn't for perfectly beautiful finished drawings. Nope. It's a place to experiment and screw up and learn and make bad drawings so the ones that count, the ones outside of the sketchbook, sing and look awesome. I know I said in this video that this challenge was a giant